Hi everyone, and welcome to our video on analyses associated with randomized clinical trials. In this video, I'm specifically going to talk about the difference between intention to treat versus per protocol analyses, and I'm going to get into the benefits of meta analyses and how they're commonly presented in test questions. So, starting out with the types of analyses and comparing and contrasting uh, intention to treat with per protocol, let's start with this fictitious setup of a randomized clinical trial of 10 patients where Five patients are randomized to placebo, five patients are randomized to treatment A. If during the course of the study, um, actually one patient randomized to treatment A, never actually ends up getting the treatment, and two patients randomized to placebo actually end up crossing over and receiving treatment A, we would see if we actually charted out actual treatment status that um, you know, there are these four individuals who got placebo and these six individuals who got treatment A. So we're really faced with this conundrum of how do we analyze the data? Do we analyze it based on how the patients were actually randomized? Or do we uh, analyze the data based on what treatment they actually received? And this really gets at the question between the type of analysis. So an intention to, to treat analysis, kind of as the name implies, compares the randomized groups. So I would compare these you know, green squares versus these pink Xs. And really, the benefit of intention to treat analyses is that because we're comparing the groups as they were originally randomized, we're preserving the randomization. And we know that the benefit of randomization is that, in theory, we are equally spacing confounders um, or equally dividing confounders between the two groups, such that the demographics should be similar, the comorbidity should be similar. And we're basically uh, having the same level of confounder in each group, such that when we actually do the analysis and, and compare the outcome between the two groups, we can feel confident that if there is a difference present, it's not just due to some underlying difference between the two groups you know, related to differences in comorbidities or demographics. So intention to treat analyses are typically favored. However, we can also do a per protocol analysis, which is where we compare um, the different treatment groups based on what they actually received. Um, so it'd be these four individuals with the placebo and these six individuals who got treatment F or treatment A. The problem with a per protocol analysis is that because we're not comparing groups as they were randomized, this randomization is broken. And therefore, that allows um, for potential confounding to come into play and to play a role in shaping the findings that we have. You know, for example, maybe these two patients who were initially randomized to placebo but ended up getting treatment A were the sicker of the patients in this study. You know, they were so sick that they couldn't just get placebo. They actually needed an active treatment. Um, and therefore, if we're comparing these groups, now that we know there's these patients who, you know, have crossed over due to underlying comorbidities or just degree of illness, they may not be equal when it comes to demographics and comorbidities. And therefore, there's potential for confounding to really explain any potential associations that come out of this. So the overall summary kind of of this section of the lecture is that there are these two ways to analyze randomized clinical trials, intention to treat versus per protocol. And we typically, if we have to pick between one, we tend to defer towards the intention to treat because that really preserves the true benefit of a randomized clinical trial, which is randomization, which is meant to distribute confounders equally between our two groups. The second topic I want to talk about in this lecture is meta-analyses. So what a, meta what a meta-analysis is, is where you take findings of multiple independent studies and synthesize them into a single study in order to determine an overall sum summary effect. So say there are these four studies that we're looking at for a potential association. Um, and these are the odds ratios um, that are obtained for each of the studies. We see that um, in study one, we get a statistically significant result because the 95% confidence interval, which is um, being portrayed by this straight line, does not cross our null value of 1.0. We see that study two is not statistically significant because it does cross our null value. Study three is also not statistically significant because it crosses our null value. Study four is statistically significant. And we see that our overall summary statistic, which combines the findings of all four of those studies, is statistically significant. And something that you'll really note and what really highlights the benefits of meta analyses is that the 95 confidence interval of the overall summary statistic is much more narrow than the confidence intervals of the independent studies. 
And this really highlights something that we talked about in the previous lecture, which is that as our sample size increases, we expect our standard error to go down because our standard error has the square root of the sample size as a denominator. And because our standard error has gone down, we have a narrower confidence interval. And basically, this highlights that the benefit of a meta-analysis is that by combining the results of multiple studies, we're going to increase our overall sample size, which gives us greater statistical power. And in addition, it really just helps us to try to uncover what is the truth in this situation, because you know, if different studies are coming up with different results, it's kind of unclear what we should truly be doing. Um, so a meta-analysis is really the most well-powered way to combine the results of multiple studies to try to figure out truly what's going on uh, and to have a you know, well-powered uh, study. Uh, as always, I um, encourage you to try your hand at the associated study questions with this lecture. Um, as always, please like, comment, subscribe, and good luck.